BMW tuning dot fee. It's another one that's been tuned up. Let's see what's going on. Oi, you my old one. That's bad, isn't it? Right, let's get this in then. I was looking and I can tell you what's wrong with it. So this is a really interesting job because it's got a B58 engine coil conversion and well, it's an M54 of course so this is an M54 but it's got B58 coils now this is great conversion probably way better coils but the issue is the transistors now these ca these cars are well known for having weak transistors in the DME which is here the engine ECU it's only a hunch but because they've already changed the um the plugs and the coils around probably to cylinder one or two or whatever and it's still misfiring probably either we've got well we've either got no fuel injectors working we've either got no coil working or we've got something else such as had they blown the transistor well i'm going to show you how to do that we might even scope it as well well scoping's a bit more difficult on the fuel side because we need to scope it with current or we need to scope it with voltage and frankly i haven't got the time i don't have scope everything it takes time to set them up and I'm not happy with the scope I need to order some new ones. I keep saying I'll do that and I keep not doing it. But first, let's get the MCV. See, let's just see if, it, you know, let's see if they're working the coils first. That's the easiest thing. Right, so what I'm doing, I'm going to have to fire this up now because we need to see what's happening with the coils. Before I even check for fault codes, I'm not interested in checking for fault codes. I don't bloody need it. I'm that good. <laughs> I'm not really. Oh, uh -huh. now it doesn't do anything. doing now is disconnecting the fuel injectors because on these as i've said transistors go now basically it's a dead easy quick check we're just going to get the flute meter and we're going to check the transistor both parts of the um the connector electrical connector to ground with continuity and usually if you've got a knackered one it'll have continuity to ground if the transistor's gone it's a quick easy check no scopes needed or nothing like that we're not going to go down that route if they all look okay, the next, you know, if there's no shorts, obvious shorts and the resistance values of the transistors are okay. What we'll do then, we'll just pull the plugs out and see if we're actually getting fuel. If we might not even be getting fuel, for example. And then, weird, last couple of days I've had nothing but this. Then we might have to start checking shit like compressions and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? But maybe not. Usually it's the transistors. I hope it's that. Anyway, coils seem okay, but just because we've got a LED uh, NCV signal, we don't mean that with the spark plugs are firing either, does it? So we would have to pull them out, ground the spark plugs and just double check we've got a spark. Can't rely on that signal. Might have a um, bad plug, might have bad contact in the coil between the coil and plug. There's loads of things. But let's crack on with these first. So all I'm doing now, it's not really a very good test. This is a bit crap really, but I'm just checking a known good cylinder resistance value. So I'm gonna check first of all to ground. Let's get that up there so we can see it. It's a good little test, but I've just done it actually and there's nothing wrong with them unfortunately, so that isn't going to be the issue. So the first one, three ohms roughly. Second one is usually a really weird mega ohm value and it discharges and that's okay, 3.4. And it, you'll see that it's, um, it starts to drop down and twitter about a bit. Nothing wrong with that. And then also we can check continuity to ground. You'll have it on one of them. The other one you shouldn't have it. Don't worry about front probing, I'm not pressing hard. There's no continuity. And you can check continuity to each other as well. Don't have that, you can do the same. So let's just tick tech one of them because they're both the same. I'll, I'll take number five, let's say, because uh, you know, I've already tested all these and number six is the same, so let's not waste our time doing it again. So let's look at number five. Let's check first of all, continuity to each other. Not so easy, I need to make some harness adapters up. There's no continuity to each other. Continuity to ground. Let's check that one. Yeah, that's okay. Three ohms, same as number one. Second one shouldn't have continuity. No, it doesn't. Let's go to resistance value. Second one should be mega ohm, three mega ohms. Oh. Uh -huh. 
It's a little bit higher, is that? I think, or is it just that I've got a bad contact? Let's double check. Don't believe your first reading. No, it was just a bad contact. Three, three-ish mega ohms. First one should be three ohms when it's on ground. Again, bad contact. Need to get better, better test equipment. Sometimes you can flick up the injector harness here. But it's really hard to do this to hold it, you know. Yeah, three. So there's nothing wrong with that injector circuit. Of course, we need to probably sculpt that. But before we do that, let's now pull the spark plugs out. Take this B58 conversion off and see what's going on in the cylinders. Right, well, unfortunately, no, maybe fortunately, there's nothing wrong with the transistors. We've actually got, and it's pretty hard to see, actually. Yeah. It's pretty hard to see, but number six and number five, well, number six in particular, it's literally wet with fuel. But then again, also number one is a bit black, but these engines, if they're tuned, they will run a bit rich anyway. Don't expect to see sandy coloured plugs that are tuned N54, I can promise. It's probably got a JB4 in it or something, whatever you call it. You know, them uh, tuning boxes. I guarantee if I open that, I'll find a tuning box. There's no doubt about that. That can cause a lot of issues. Uh, we've got fuel. It's wet fuel rather than dry fuel. On number six, it's absolutely soaking. So have we got a compression or something of the problem? Have we got a issue with the valve tronic or the valve's not working proper? So now it's going to be a compression check, but we'll get the camera in first and see what's going on. Well, oh, well, that's good enough for me. I thought so. We've got NCV signal, we've got a spark, haven't we? So, right, let's try number five first. Maybe I'm going to take this bar off. It's kind of getting in my way. It's a little bit irritating. And, well, then again, maybe not. The less we strip, the better. It was already stripped when it came to me, so, you know, hey ho. Right, I'm going to go and check the compression on this now. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Okay. Oh. Again. Oh, uh -huh. there's no compression on number six. Oh, dear me. That isn't so good, is it? What we're gonna do is we're gonna check number six one more time. That's the third time I've checked it, just to rule out any areas. Obviously number one's okay, number five's okay. Probably it's turning number five off because it's the nearest to the cylinder and it's affecting the engine balance. But we could have a leaking injector number five as well, couldn't we? We need we don't have the Tesla camera, side camera anymore. And I can't get it in and look at the injectors firing while the engines be being rotated. Um can't get hold of a new camera, it's knackered basically, you know, the, the lens. So that's a good tool that's been ripped out of my diagnostic toolbox, which is a little bit friggin' depressing to be fair. But there's other ways, so don't worry about it. We can always pull it out and actually physically put it on the fuel rail and externally power it and just check what the situation is, you know, see the spray pattern for ourselves. But it's looking like there's no compression number six. So let's just check it one more time and then we'll work out why there's no compression. Okay, Thomas, lad, crack you on. Yeah, there's no compression at all. Okay. Well, that was about it with this job. Uh, sadly, kind of game over, innit? So we're going to see what happens with that. I could maybe make a follow-up video, but usually what happens is with engine repairs such as removing the seven head and repairing this job they often get given to someone else so i'll probably not see this job again so let's just have a quick look inside this cylinder now and you can see these uh, particular marks i've just highlighted there for you that's just literally water and oil mixed emulsion you know it's like a coolant mix now i didn't film the header tank sadly but there was no coolant in the header tank so we've definitely without a shadow of a doubt we've got a leak haven't we now i did pressure test this and unfortunately i didn't see any coolant going in but that doesn't mean anything really it could be that when it gets hot the gasket starts to swell and open and then the coolant drips in but basically we've got coolant loss we've got no external leaks we've got no compression on number six obviously the reason for that is quite simple isn't it we've got basically a cracked head cracked block or an head gasket on number six so you need to remember when the car comes to me i have no idea that it's got this problem of course so i do everything methodically i go through fuel uh, spark compression that type of stuff timing if, if it needed to be but in this case it's quite simple isn't it thank god you just see there on the side of the cylinder wall we've got this emulsion and i did check the cooling system it was completely empty didn't bother videoing that but 
yeah, it's definitely going somewhere. It's not externally leaking under pressure. Didn't get it leaking in the cylinders at the time of test, but that could be a thermal thing. It could leak when it gets hot. We don't know. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you learned quite a lot from it. Um, hopefully it gives you, especially if you're new to this trade, an idea of the sort of diagnostic process you need to follow. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't need to scope things, do we? We just need to rule things out. Quick NCV test. Confirm that the spark is firing even though you've got NCV signal on the coil. Then of course we just need to look at have we got a leaking injector, have we got a faulty injector, have we got a shorted transistor, and lastly, compression check, and that found the problem. Until next time, keep subscribing, keep watching, and thanks very much.